In this video, we are going to graph inverse tangent and identify the domain and range. We begin with the original graph of tangent. Now, tangent is a function because it passes the vertical line test. That means if I draw any vertical line to the graph, it will only intersect the graph one time. However, in order for a function to have an inverse, it must be one-to-one. -one. In other words, the graph must pass the horizontal line test. This means if I draw any horizontal line to the graph, it will only intersect the graph one time. Clearly, tangent is not one-to-one. -one. It fails the horizontal line test, but Mathematicians are clever. Mathematicians decided to restrict the domain from negative pi over two to pi over two. And this way, the graph passes the horizontal line test and thus tangent has an inverse. So we restrict the domain from negative pi over two to pi over two. Let's redraw the graph with the restricted domain. So I'm going to redraw tangent. From negative pi over two to pi over two. We have our vertical asymptotes at negative pi over two and pi over two. And we have a point at zero, zero, and the graph goes out like this, just like that. Now here are the steps for graphing inverse tangent. Step one, draw a number quadrant. So I'm going to draw our number quadrant. We have pi over two. We have negative pi over two. And let's put pi over two here. And negative pi over two. Step two, draw the line y equals x. So I'm just going to put a few points here. I'm just going to draw a dotted line. Just like that. Step three, draw the restricted graph of tangent. So we have an asymptote at negative pi over two and pi over two. So I'm just going to do that. And we have a point at zero, zero, and the graph swings out like this. Let's write our key locations for the restricted graph of tangent. So we have a point at zero, zero. We have an asymptote, I'll abbreviate it as A. at x equal negative pi over two, and we have another asymptote at x equal pi over two. Step four, swap the x and y values. So we see that we have a point at zero, zero. Well, that will stay the same. We have a vertical asymptote at negative pi over two, so if we swap the x and y values, it will become y equal negative pi over two. And we have another asymptote at x equal pi over two. So if we swap the x and y value, we will have a horizontal asymptote at pi over two. So I'm just going to put the point and the asymptotes on our graph. So zero, zero stays as is. And I'm just going to put my horizontal asymptote at pi over two and negative pi over two. 
Step five, draw the new graph, which is inverse tangent by reflecting about the line y equals x. So I'm just going to start at zero, zero, and I'm just going to reflect the line y equals x. Now let's separate the new graph from the old one so we can get a good look at the graph of inverse tangent. So if I separate the graph, we're going to have pi over two and negative pi over two. And we're going to have our horizontal asymptotes And we're going to have a point at zero, zero, and it's just going to swing out like this. And here we have the graph of y is equal to tan inverse of x. Now it is easy for us to identify the domain and range of inverse tangent. The domain we see it is from negative infinity to positive infinity and the range is from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Keep in mind that we have a set of parentheses due to our horizontal asymptotes. That means that we're not actually including negative pi over 2 or pi over 2, but we can have values that come very close to them. So if we were to look at that on a unit circle, here we have negative pi over 2, and here we have pi over 2. And we're not actually including pi over 2 or negative pi over 2, but we can have all the values in the right region of the unit circle. And that is how you graph inverse tangent and identify the domain and range. Thank you for watching, and always remember that you are awesome.